Hi, good afternoon. We've got a couple of people that have jumped on already for this Facebook Live. We appreciate you joining us this afternoon. It is Thursday. It's 3 o'clock, so you know what we do here. We talk about ways to target the violence in our community. We've seen an uptick in violence, especially among our youth. So we here are trying to at NBC 15, we're trying to find ways to to fight that violence and to find good things that are going on for our kids. So I got two guests here that have very special uh, things, activities that are going on. First, we've got uh, Deacon Carvin Eli from uh, Mount Zion Primitive Baptist Church, and he's going to talk about their Love Fest, which is a Stop the Violence event. And I've got Levy King with Hope Boxing Academy. And you think of boxing, you're like, oh, that's going to teach kids more violence, but it's not. It's actually a way to teach them discipline. So we're going to go into that this afternoon. Join the conversation with us. If you have any questions for either gentleman, make sure that you comment in the comment section, and we'll try to get to those questions uh, when we can and time permits. Uh, we're going to start with you, Deacon Eli. Tell us about the Love Fest that you've got going on this weekend. Okay, well, Love Fest was originated by my pastor, one of his pet peeves, and uh, we've been doing this for a while on a small scale. But now we're, the church has gotten larger, and we're doing it on a larger scale. We're reaching out, trying to um, get, the, get people to realize that violence is not the answer. We have Love Fest, which is um, a rally to stop the violence in Mobile. And the motto is, do violence to no man. That's taken from Luke 3rd and 14. We're trying to more or less approach this from a spiritual standpoint. We, um, the Love Fest, we are greeting people with love and uh, we're having plenty of food. If, if food, we're ministering, we're praying. We're ha we got we're having guests. The mayor is supposed to be there, uh, and um, as I said, we we're giving out clothing, new clothing, nothing old, and it's something that we just we're trying to do to try our part or do our part in trying to stop some of this violence in in the city. This is where we live. This is where we have homes. So uh, I hear people say, well, it's going on everywhere. Well, maybe so, but it's going, this is where I live. So I, we have to do something. We have to do something. Mm -hmm. and, we've, and if people don't do something and just stop, then we're letting the violence win, right. and we're not going to do that. I, I, I consider myself a spiritual person as well. And you're yes. right, hitting them with church, because you mm -hmm. hear how many people that say um, we messed yes. up when we took prayer out of the schools, then we saw so many things go wrong, so we bring them right. to the church and pray for them. That's right. And um, we, um, I have a saying that um, to have a better life, get closer to Christ. And that's what we're, that's our aim, is to pull more people into Mount Zion. My, my pastor, Reverend Byron Daniel, um, this is when he, the root of the problem to violence is the, the, the absence of Christ in people's lives. And so we're just trying to uh, do love fests, annual affair, a necessary affair. We have sponsors who, around the city, who feel that this is a necessary affair, mm -hmm. a, a necessary effort. <clears throat> so uh, we, we aren't having any problem with the sponsors, you know, and everybody's coming to us with the donation. Whereas this is a non-profit event. We don't make a dime from it, but we're just trying to do what we can to. And it, it's an invitation to everybody in the city of Mobile uh, uh, to come and uh, join us. For right. love fest. And where is the love fest going to be held? It's on the grounds of the church. And the church is located on 1050 Duval, the corner of Duval and Interstate I-10, uh, uh, right there at the uh, corner up on the hill. Okay, and what time does it start? It starts at 12, 12 to 4. 12 and to 4. we invite everybody. Okay, we're going to get plenty of food. <laughs> and that's where you're going to get people is all the food. And of course, all the fun and activity, but right, we love yeah. that. We're going to come back and talk about Love Fest in just a minute. But Levy, let's talk about why we have to have um, some of these fests and ways that boxing is going to help it. Of course, we're, we're having Stop the Violence events because of the violence. So the question is at Hope Boxing Academy, how do, 
what kind of difference do y'all make? How, what is boxing going to do to change someone? <laughs> well, Kim, thank you for having me here today representing the, the Academy. But, you know, I, I think you're right. You know, there are many things uh, out here that are helping to curb this violence in our community. But we believe boxing is uh, unique. It is a unique sport. Uh, and we use boxing as an enticement to our kids because because of its uniqueness, it brings a lot of intrigue, right? So kids uh, join our program with Whole Boxing Academy thinking they're strictly going to learn about boxing techniques. But it's more than that. Uh, with our program, we offer a three-tier solution to helping our kids be more rounded. Our number one goal is to graduate our kids. Mm -hmm. And if our kids are focused on graduation, it encourages them to, to stay away from violence, right? To do the right thing versus the wrong thing. So we focus on tutoring program, a mentoring program, and also a leadership program. So they come in for the boxing uh, and that experience, but they walk away being better leaders uh, from our program, from our mentorship, from our tutoring, and they walk away being more disciplined as students, both for our girls and our boys. So we, we think it's a great program. Again, it is unique because it's tied to boxing. So when they come in each week, several days a week, and they come in and box, but also during that week, they're being mentored, they're being tutored, and they go through leadership classes. And each one of those sessions are individual 60-minute programs that they must attend along with the boxing. So we think we are unique, and we think that's going to help curb some of the violence in our community. It will, and it also <clears throat> teaches them how to let out aggression, and I guess I know that because I box. <laughs> a lot of people may not know that, but I love boxing. I've been doing it since I was 10 years old, and it helps me clear my head. So, and it is a disciplined sport. You it have is. to, you can't just swing wildly. You cannot. You, sometimes you want to. <laughs> sometimes. Well, our executive director, he's been doing this for over 10 years. Uh, his name is Dexter Sutton here mm -hmm. in Mobile. A lot of people know Dexter, but he is the executive director of the organization. And we asked him, why did you start this? Why did you start this program? He says, I want to save our kids. And again, it goes back to what you said. It's an outlet. Uh, it allows kids to expend that energy or expend that frustration and aggression, but also put it in a place where it's positive, and then we use that energy to refocus them into those other three areas as well. And you said something key with when you were talking about mentoring and tutoring, because we just got a study yesterday that we did a new story on, on how so many kids aren't meeting the benchmarks when it comes to math, when it mm -hmm. comes to reading. People don't know that there's different tutoring things there, and if you incorporate hey, I can go to boxing class because a lot of people say, well, we don't have the time if we're trying to put our kids in the after-school activities, but you've got this all-in-one. All-in-one. It's all-inclusive, uh, and they actually, so they box every week. So four days a week, they visit the, the academy. And so each day is a boxing portion, but also each day is going to be uh, connected with one day on leadership, the other day may be on tutoring, the other day may be on mentorship. And what we've done, we've done it differently. In the past, uh, this organization has partnered with Spring Hill College. So we're bringing in excited college kids who are looking to give back to our community. They come in and tutor, and the kids love that. They gravitate easier to a 20-year-old versus a 50-year-old, right? So, you know, we have that connection. And then our mentoring, while our boxing um, uh, professionals and trainers, they mentor them because they're boxing them, but we also give them that next level mentorship where we're partnering with other organizations in the community to provide that one-on-one -on -one communication. And then, of course, leadership. We partner with our Marine, uh, local Marines here. We let them come in and do our leadership training, you know, and it's just a really great partnership with all three community partners. I know a lot of times people want to know, uh, is the cost a lot? It is not. It is not. The, the cost is extremely reasonable. Uh, and please don't ask me because I'm, <laughs> I sit on the board and I can't remember right now. But what we do have, this board, I serve as the board chairman. And so we've had conversations on the board about making sure that we turn no kid away, right? So if it's a money issue, we're going to do what it takes in order, to, as a board of directors, to still give that young kid an opportunity. So uh, it is extremely affordable. I know that we've had some people uh, that I you know personally have talked to that have given sponsorships even to some of those kids that um, need to come in that can't necessarily afford they have. taking classes. I would like to highlight two people. Number one, General Cooper. General Gary Cooper yes. has been the sole benefactor, <laughs> and literally, sole benefactor for this organization for 10 years. Really the, the financial support has come from him and his vision and his mission. Uh, we, we just love him, right, because he gives back to this community. But also we have other community partners. I would like to uh, highlight uh, the Hargrove Foundation. Uh, this past uh, Mardi Gras season, uh, they gifted the organization with $10,000 just yeah. because they believed in the mission 
of the organization. And so we're working uh, to be able to get more exposure, like coming here today and sharing what we do, to make sure that other organizations know that we're here, uh, we're relevant, and we're credible, and we want to be able to assist our kids as well. And that shows the backing that the entire community wants to do to stop the violence, because you have organizations, you have companies that are willing to donate their money. I've talked to other companies who yes. are willing to do the same thing. They're like, you know what, a safer city, uh, making our, you know, bettering our kids, it's going to only benefit the city in the long run. It's not going to, I mean, it's going to make it more successful. It will, definitely. More people want to live here. Again, yes. let's talk about Love Fest. Go okay. back there. Let's talk about how many years have you been doing Love Fest? Uh, we've been doing Love Fest for uh, about um, eight years. Eight years. As I said, uh, we started out on a small scale, and uh, now we are larger, and we're trying to reach more people. Um, and... Um, we just uh, want to minister, and if, they, if there's a problem, our doors are always open. Mount Zion Primitive Baptist Church on Duval, our doors are open. For if there's a problem, anybody want to be prayed for or, or whatever, minister to, we have a progressive pastor, Pastor Byron Daniel, and um, we're just uh, reaching out. And see, that's what we hear a lot of time is that um, a lot of people are saying, okay, we do a lot of these stop the violence rallies, but what happens afterwards? I mean, when the, the games are done, all the food is eaten up, these kids, like you're saying, will be able to come back into the church? Come back. And at any time, our doors are open. So that's good to yeah. hear. Again, Love Fest is this Saturday. This Saturday. At, 17. Okay. Tell us again where. Uh, this Saturday at Mount Zion, Primitive Baptist Church on Duval, uh, 1050 Duval, the corner of Duval and I 10 Service Road. Up on the hill, you won't be able to miss us. <laughs> All right. That's right. We're, we're going to have a good time. We're hoping for a good turnout this weekend, and it's no excuse because the weather's going to be amazing. It's from what Alan has told us, exactly. it's going to be great weather. Right. So bring your kids on out. Right. Of course, oh, yes. if you know. Um, it keeps them off the streets. It gets them busy. It gives them something yeah. to do as well. Hope Boxing Academy. People want to sign up. What do we need to do? So they can visit our um, site. So right now our site is being held in the offices or the gym of our executive director, which is um, Dexter Sutton, but it's called Dexter's Fitness Center. And it's right at the corner of, it's at the loop. It's right at the corner of government, uh, where government and airport merge. Right there at that corner, the address escapes me. I apologize to all the viewers all here. Right. But, uh, but that's where we're located. Dexter's Fitness Center right there. That's where we host our academy for our and I youth. believe we had a phone number up for um, Hope Boxing Academy. There you go. Oh, and there's the address right there, 1900 Government Street. And they're on Facebook as well. It's a great gym. I've been in there a couple of times. It's a great gym. Um, to visit. Dexter has been amazing. I'm going to have to get in there and get in the ring. <laughs> so we need to do have a celebrity boxing match. That's a great idea. I don't know. These kids are pretty strong nowadays. I think I know who might win. I tell you so so good. Very good. Excellent. All right, got, gentlemen, I, I want to thank you both for joining me this afternoon. I appreciate it. Levy pleasure. King, Carvin pleasure. Eli, um, and we've got a lot of stuff going on to try to help these kids. Again, if you have anything that you've got going on, please inbox me, shoot me a message. I'd love to feature you here. We have to do something collectively as a community to try to stop the violence and help so many of our children. Next week, I've got my guest is going to talk about um, the connection between mental health and violence and how it's affecting our children. So you definitely want to tune in then. We'll see you then.